Hey, son. Ditto plus looper in the uh, effects loop of the Helix at the moment, just because I've got this Ditto plus which can do some interesting things. I've just done a video on it, um, and I wanted to just jump online and say hello to a few people whilst Lenny is working. Hope you're doing extremely well out there. Um, so that was me attempting to play a little bit of Bon Iver. Um, the, the pedal is, is cool. So um, the, the thing that I like that it can do, let's, let me just show you. We can start off with like a which kind of pickups do I recommend in the Strat? A lot of dirty blondes are great. So Sam, here's the, the way that I'm using it. So you've got this thing called extended play looping, 
um, and you can do this kind of thing. So I'm going to start recording now. So I've got that to keep a rhythm and I can loop that then around. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. See what I mean? So now I've got an, a four bar loop of that thing. So So it's kind of a cool way to create these longer loops that stay in time a little bit better than if you're just relying on it.
very difficult to do it with that particular tune, so it's a terrible idea, but you get the gist. Uh, let me try something. chatting in a comment I haven't got around to answering it yet about plugins is that right that I've tried, I've tried the, is it ML Audio stuff, um, I've tried the Neural DSP stuff, and I've tried Helix Native a bit, um, I've not tried the S-Gear stuff, and I've not tried the Mercurial stuff, although both of those companies have asked me about doing that. Uh, these are K-Line pickups in here.
point is when you go to get a PC or a computer, you may as well get a decent one. I think. Um, so I think around this time last year, Liana's dad built me this computer and it saved me a lot of time. So I feel like if you're going to be getting a, a Mac, if you're, it's that time to upgrade, then you may as well get a decent one. Um, in my opinion. Um, you're thinking of buying the Neural Saldano one. You can just try it, maybe. Um, I'm not totally sold on the Neural stuff, to be honest. ITX Stereo Loop Freeze one probably. plug-in catch-up thing is a real thing. I think people had some issues with um, all sorts of stuff, didn't they, with Line 6, Helix Native. Alien says Apple stuff is overpriced. It's better to build your own PC from parts. I think that's true in some ways. I think some of the Apple stuff has come down in price. I think the M1 specs are, are quite a lot more reasonably priced than they used to be. I think they're a bit more competitive now. Um, but I think what people use the Apple stuff for more generally is for the operating system rather than, um, you know, having the highest spec compared to a Windows machine. Uh, I'm running my sound into my headphones. You're just hearing it straight into a desk, Ellie. All right, any requests for anything? John March there, the Zen guitar guy. Go give his channel a follow. Um, got some cool stuff to do with Ted Green. I think more stuff is going to be coming from John in the future. Uh, he's going to be on the channel on Friday. If you want to spend more time... The, it doesn't actually take that long to build a computer. So Lenny's dad did it with me, uh, or for me. It didn't take him too long at all. Um, the M1 is not... Com Compatible with a lot of pro apps like Pro Tools, Adobe Premiere yet. That's a big issue. Uh, when I covered a Gilad Hexelman song, Lullaby to Myself, do you remember what patch I used? Um, I need to remind myself of the song. <clears throat> so I found out the other day that <laughs> Gilad Hexelman follows me on Instagram, which was, I think that must be, he's like one of my top three guitarists. 
Um, so that was a real shock to find that. Um, if you've not heard of Gilad Hexelman, I think you'll um, I think you've taken Lullaby to Myself. Is that the one that goes? That would have been updated jazz tone. So uh, that's just me re reminding myself of that one. It's a huge tune. Um, <laughs> cheers, John. with the pod go use an amp with the pod go for effects and the headphone jack um you could do it might be more suited to use the hx stomp for that kind of use maybe unless you've already got one but yeah you could just bypass the amp and cap <laughs> can run Apple on a PC, I think. Um, but yeah, you've got, to, got to know what you're doing to be able to do that. It's not something I could do. Uh, sorry, cannot actually play that.
if someone asked about um, upgrade from Boss Katana to something higher end modeling, what would I recommend? Um, so the thing that you're going to find is that you're to get the best results out of the modeling sort of stuff. You then have to start thinking about. Um, hey, cheers, Sam. You have to start thinking about how you're going to amplify the modeling stuff. So for me, in the studio, the LSR, JBL LSR, what are they called? 305s, whatever they are, are dope. Um, um, five-way switch on a strap, which is my favorite. Uh, it's the fourth position, I think, or the just a straightforward neck pickup. <laughs>
Tim's latest video, what was that about? Um, what model that? Um, the orange wristband, I went to a gig last night, sleep token, pretty cool. It's, it's going to be a bit tough to get a hold of, I think, for uh, quite a while. Um, just to see that Tim's got one. Where is that? Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the thing that uh, I'm just watching a tiny bit of Tim's video. The the issue that I have with the the live kind of modelling thing. So I was watching a band last night, as I say, Sleep Token, and um, I just don't dig the sound. Oh, excuse me, the sound of that live, that I couldn't hear any guitar, basically. Um, and I feel like that's more likely to happen with modelling than with a real amp. Uh, just, I don't know, it's one of those things that does sort of worry um, when I hear a band live and I just can't really hear the guitars, even though they've got their own sound van on and stuff. just seems like maybe... Um, a model guitar tone is easy to deal with for a sound man, sure, but um, as an audience member, if I'm thinking, well, I can't really hear any guitar, 
then I'd rather it was a more difficult job for the sound man and I could actually get some enjoyment from the guitar player in a gig. And that's uh, in a rock metal context. So there's no reason really for me not to be able to hear that guitar. I don't know whether they were using Kempers or Quad Cortex though. Um, so that for me is what makes me think, well maybe um, a real amp is still fairly important. Um, especially for us people that would be going out without a proper sound man. Do you really want to share speakers and like the, the whole job of the PA, you know, it's got much more important things going through it, like the drums, the vocals, maybe keyboards and track if they've got those as well. Um, I feel like it's super easy for the guitar to get lost in all of that. Oh, and bass as well is going to be going through the front of the house as well in a lot of cases. Um, I just think the guitar gets lost in that quite often and that's not something that I like. Uh, I've never played a Zoom G5. Is that the Magic? Is it called the Magic Stomp or something like that? Uh, Terry says he switched to his HX Stomp for library, loves the tone and cool voice. Thanks very much, Terry. Uh, Alien asked if I've ever tried the Rockerverb Mark III. No, I haven't. Um, most of my experience in amps is Meza Boogie stuff. I recently grabbed that little Vox AC15 to check that out. Um, I've had the odd like Fender Princeton and Champ. Um, and I've played those two two rock amps that you've seen on the channel. Um, never owned or really played an orange amp. Oh, I've played an orange crush. Is that the, the solid state one? I think I've played one of those for a bit. Um, that was quite a cool little amp. I bought, but I just bought that because it was part of a, like a deal. Um, but yeah, I've not tried the proper rocker verb. I think they were quite well regarded amps at one stage and sort of um, they're not terribly fashionable right now. I guess most big amps kind of aren't fashionable at the moment. That's sort of the thing. Um, So Fender American Series Strats, the more recent stuff to me, I don't find super interesting from Fender. Um, I don't know exactly when it was, maybe like sort of around 2010 was that when they started to do a less classic kind of Fender American Strat where it's a bit more modern, like two point trims and stuff. I don't find that particularly interesting from Fender. I think the Mexican stuff is a little bit more close to the spec that I would want from a Fender. Um, or the American Vintage Reissue series and whatever that's called now. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with the guitars. I just find them a little bit too modern focused. For a Fender Strat, I kind of want them to be vintage.
Ted Lasso or Roy Kent. As a pro, I think the Helix LT would be the way to go. Um, it's twice the power of the Podgo, or slightly more than twice the power. And um, yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. I, if you could find a used Helix LT, I would go for that. Uh, the next of my K-Line Stable Season Lee. Um, they didn't used to be, so I think now they kind of are. I've not really adjusted the necks. I kind of just try to go with whatever the thing's doing because I don't really want to take the neck off and make adjustments. Um, I feel like that's, well, it's just a bit of a hassle, isn't it? Um, humidity in the UK is generally always fairly humid here. It doesn't really dry out too much. Um, I've got a dehumidifier in the house you know, in case it gets too damp or whatever. Um, but yeah, these aren't, they're pretty stable, which is a good thing. Get your guitar to in three chord jams. You can slumming it with the bells. Are you still persevering with the quad cortex, are you? Um, I've kind of lost it all interested in that sort of stuff. Um, I have got uh, a slight interest in seeing when it is that they'll actually get the plugins across. That would be a, a significant update or when they implement a looper of some kind, I guess that would also be a significant update, but yeah, exactly. The cloud stuff to me was never a, a key reason to be grabbing that thing anyway. Um, yeah, the plugins, I think that's, but it was also one of the hardest problems they've got, probably. Um, but yeah, who knows? I'm actually playing in Top Nest tomorrow as well. That might be the Bay Horse. If anyone's around. Um, but yeah. about dropping the quad cortex for now I think the chances of you missing out on anything it's gonna be a while I think before before there's a, a real reason to hold on to one versus anything else I 
I think there's things that people like about them, but once you actually get one in your hands and do a comparison with anything else, if you know how to use the other things, you can make them sound the same. Um, there's lots of sounds that you can make with other devices that you cannot do with the Quad Cortex. Um, so that was why I don't really mind not having one anymore. Not only that, but they're super happy to pay loads of people to do demos. Um, which is not in and of itself a problem, but... I don't know, I feel like they're a bit over heavy on the old promotional game. Not that anyone's asked me particularly much. <laughs> um, but I do still get those Cortex Cloud or whatever they're called updates sort of have a little bit of a chuckle. Um, any questions about anything? Anthony's um, Cornford Carrera in the house at the moment. I've been messing around with that a little bit. It's quite a cool little one. in one video today, Tony. We are hearing the Helix um, with a Ditto Plus looper in the effects loop. Uh, the preset I'm using is basically two-ish freeze. using it for part of the ditto video Tony the bit where there's the box if I, I might have texted you that already maybe not oh no no it was a comment but yeah the bit where you could see the ditto box I was actually using the Carrera in that so when is he gonna be in a band instead doc instead of what Kind of cool. cheap stuff that is enjoyable in a, in a way that the expensive stuff is not. So I think part of what ends up being disappointing about the Quad Cortex is that 
not only is it maybe not as featured as some other units, it's also, you know, 1600 quid or whatever. And I don't know, that to me is part of the thing that makes it not as fun. Whereas if you pick up something like a pod, you know, like a pocket pod for 40 quid or whatever it was that I got one for, or the, the Line 6 pod from back then, and you can get some really usable stuff out of it. I think that's like a nice surprise. Um, whereas it's more of an unpleasant surprise when you buy something that's super expensive and you think, oh, well, this hasn't got this, this, or this. Um, NP says, thank you for the Mark 525 demo. Couldn't find some serious non-metal guitar video. There's so much more that that amp does. And I don't necessarily even think it's particularly good at the metal thing. Um, but it does so many other things really well. I think like a, as a rock amp, it's amazing. Um, the, the fat channel on it is amazing as well. The clean channel on fat mode. Um, surprisingly loud in some ways, I think. Gigging with it, I've got the master to about three on the clean channel for a 25 watt amp, it's surprisingly loud. Um, yeah, cool little amp. Um, doesn't sound quite as big, I would say, as my Mesa Boogie Mark III, um, but it's also what, like a nine kilogram amp, which is really useful for certain things. Um, I'm just gonna try and record this. Jim, how you doing buddy? It's my best man. Do you need support? Do you prefer playing with a strap on? I see what you did there, Jim. It's excellent, excellent. Um, so, an interesting question there from um, two and three chord jams. Curious as to your opinion on why the factory presets are so bad on the Helix. Um, I'm not sure that I agree with that necessarily, but I don't particularly use them. Um, and I think that's maybe the, the, the issue there is that someone sits down and tweaks those presets with a certain guitar um, and maybe that guitar doesn't look anything like yours, whereas presumably if you're on my channel and you dig the sounds that I get out of it, you're going to be either looking for similar sorts of tones to me, or you're going to be using a similar guitar to me perhaps as well. And so I think maybe when you look at a preset that I've made or you hear a preset that I've made, we're more on the same page than if I you were to look at the preset that whoever is programming on the Helix. Um, so for instance, there are some stock presets from Jason Saditi's in there, which don't necessarily work for me personally. Um, but there's also ones from Rabia, which I kind of dig those. Um, I did a video looking at some of the other presets that other people have made. I think Rhett Scholes was a, a thing that was quite cool. Um, and then the other thing is, I think, the Helix for me is not necessarily the sort of device I think you can necessarily just rely on presets for. Um, it's capable of a lot of different stuff. And if you think about like each kind of block there is, you know, a world of pedals. Um, so I think that's kind of where the issues are. You've got complexity there. Let me just try some factory presets here. And see if we can find any that work so even on like the fractal device and stuff that it, it's it's not like i find loads of usable presets in there it's one or two that i i like um so this is preset one double norm
So what I might do with that, um, what else have we got? We've got a compressor in it. And we've got a delay. You know, that's not a bad sounding preset to me. Just you've got to look at it and go, okay, well, that's a Fender Twin. And how would you play with a Fender Twin? And the other thing that I might do with that would be maybe to get rid of this wah pedal. Uh, I'm going to clear that and instead what I'm going to have between the amp and the speaker will be an EQ just chucking up the low end a little bit uh, so I shouldn't leave that here this is kind of my personal preference if I'm playing this sort of tone I just want a little bit more weight to it so I'm going to chuck up the low gain and see where we get. What else might I do? Would I change the cab maybe? We've got condenser there, maybe I move that mic a bit closer, maybe I turn up the early reflections. And what do we get then? Jim, do you have a recommendation yet? So that's the US double norm. The first preset in the helix. Um, what else might I do? Maybe I would take down the presence a little bit, because that's sounding a little bit... Um, I do understand there is definitely a learning curve with this stuff, so I'm just maybe I'll just save that. I don't know. I'm never going to use that preset again, but. But the Helix, for me, I think, and I think it's probably universally accepted to be one of the better U UIs out there. So, although there is a learning curve, it's one of those ones which. <laughs> So this is the second preset, the Essex A30. And it's got a, a range master at the front of it, if we want to turn that on. So this, I mean, it's not really working for me in this particular setup. Um, so what might I do with that? Turn the drive down. Um, what else could we do? Maybe turn the sag down a bit. Um, move the mics closer. Is generally I like to have the mics super close. Um, as a rule, and early reflections are, are kind of a good thing to add. And you know, do I love? the whole reverb, not particularly, so I'm going to put on the glitz instead, and you just get to know what you think works for you. And instead of a range master, I know that I like the sound of a tube screamer into a vox, um, so I'm going to change that. Uh, where would be there? So then the preset would sound like this. 
But yeah, so those are the little changes that I make to that preset. Um, I just think you have to maybe get used to the idea that things where they're set are not always going to work for you. You might find one or two presets in there that work. So this is Brit Plexi Jump. Let's just check the speakers to see where we are distance wise and I'm going to bring that as close as possible maybe turn up the early reflections just so that we've got a bit more of that room feeling I'll check what reverb we're using it's a plate reverb that for me is not my favorite kind of reverb here so I'm going to use the glitz again just because I prefer the way that sounds <laughs> am I thinking with this? Maybe I want a bit more bass. Um. And then there's a Timmy here, which I could kick on. Um, we started here. Let me search, show you. Oh, too slow. So yeah, all the, the little changes that I'd make with that one: boost the bass, turn up the early reflections on the cab blocks, and bring the distance down on the mic. <coughs> Not a huge difference. Um, but yeah, like little things that can make. Little different uh, changes can make quite a big difference. So this is the Cali Rectifier preset now. The four. <laughs> Me, 
that's already sounding pretty good. There's a Scream 808 up the front if we want it. So that Cali Rectifier preset, I'd say straight out of the box, that one sounds pretty good. So what I might do if I check the the cab here, uh, wait the amp, what am I looking at? Let's go to the cab and I'll just bring those distances as close as possible, turn up the early reflections and then just take another listen. <laughs> So that, for me, that one works quite well. Um, I know the master volume on the rectifier is super important. So I'll turn the drive down, but turn the master up. Get a really different flavor with that. there and what it sounds like before was now we're using the helix right now chap um but yeah those were just some of the factory presets so i think there's yeah you've got to know what you're getting into with them um this preset that i made here was actually made from the bulb beer ones on it. Uh, where would that be? Like that. Uh, that sort of thing. Wait, where are we? But yeah. Obviously, I prefer the sound of my own presets to ones that I generally get online, but I'd expect that because I know roughly what I want it to sound like. Um, yeah, or I can experiment with it until it sounds roughly how I want it to sound. Just trying to find the preset I put together today, right, this one.
right, any other questions about anything? I think I'm gonna have to go and watch some Curb Your Enthusiasm in a second. Um, thank you for joining in. Thank you to Sam for the coffee. Uh, I won't be able to do a live stream tomorrow because I'm trying to play jazz. Um, but there will be some other videos on the channel, obviously. Ibanez RGT to take a holiday, right? So you 
up with me and Keith yet then. stage or I've kind of got to the stage now where there's not really too much that I particularly want to sell anymore um, which you know you can carry on selling for the sake of it but then if you're gonna start to regret some of the things then maybe it's not really worth it um, so that's kind of the rule when it you want to sell until it makes you unhappy to Keep selling. Norma? Norma! Come here, doggy. Norma! Oh, watch Kevin, you do that. Where's this dog? Norma. Don't kick her. Don't kick her, I just stopped her. Furiously kicking the dog. Should I get Keith on Zoom and have him decide? Uh, no, it's completely up to you, isn't it? Going on in the top left hand corner, and you're watching your own video. No, that's how a live stream works. The stories are live. Yeah, that's how things work. Oh, so Move you can't see what they're seeing right now? Yeah, that is what they're seeing. It's like five minutes behind. It's not five minutes. Move that bike a sec. My wife is uh, just interrupting the stream. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Why can I tell if it's working when it's so far behind? Yeah, that, that's the trouble. And if, if you do get to the stage where there's things that you're not using anymore, then that's the point to sell them, isn't it? But if you are still using them and enjoying them, then When's the light gonna you can regret it. I sold the Mesa Boogie Mark III and then regretted it, so I bought it back. And oh, there we are. Don't drop her. She's gone. Give me my instead. Drop so, yeah. Philosophy on selling gear is uh, complicated. Start a loop with a sample of saying it's five minutes behind. I can do that. <laughs> I'd have to get this video off from the. Hey. <laughs> when that's gonna go on the screen? It'd be quicker if I just watched it from my phone. It would. It's the same. Yeah. There's latency on it, so they get better experience. Don't play any of your guitars except the K-Line regularly, then some of those can potentially go. I've not, <laughs> no, no. I've not sold that many guitars. This is Ruben Fenton. Where are you? Can we find a made-up spot for him to... Uh... No. <laughs> yeah, in theory, I could sell everything except for, you know, like the, the black Gibson. Um... Black Gibson and maybe the blue K line, but it's not realistically gonna happen, is it? Cool doggy. They're all right, aren't they? Mexican drug lords. <laughs> Who's just run out? Yeah. Me and Keith wanted to do a video at some point talking about our experiences in gear because we basically both reached the same amount kind of number with a big sell off. Um, I think that could make a semi-interesting video. Right, I'll see you lot tomorrow, probably. Um, thank you for watching, ah. and 
you doing? Oh, speak soon. Cheers all. Wow.